We are absolutely delighted that the Premier League uh, is taking over the Love Football Zone for the next hour and a half or so. Um, and they are going to be sharing with you today um, some thoughts, some ideas um, around one of their exciting new initiatives and programmes called Premier League Primary Stars. As always, I am joined by the most important guest of all to the right of me. The glistening trophy is here uh, and it is here not only to look at but also for you all to have your photograph with uh, across the afternoon. So please uh, not only listen to what, we, what they've got to say over the next uh, short period of time but also please the important thing about the Premier League takeover is that you have an opportunity to chat with our friends from the Premier League but also you get to have a shot with the trophy. And alongside that this year, um, as is explained um, more in detail around what the Primary Stars program is, we want as many of you to sign up to the Primary Stars program, especially if you're here and you're from an education and school background. We are joined today by both Nick Perchard and Will Brass from the Premier League, as well as colleagues from Wigan Athletic, West Bromwich Albion, Manchester City and Manchester United. And in a moment, I'll introduce them all and their roles. It is great that the Premier League has such an impact on both communities in the UK and in communities across the world. But we must always remember that the Premier League's biggest impact is what they do on the pitch. And I think it's always good, before we start any presentation, to have a little look back at what a great season it was last year.
another breathtaking season. I think after Leicester won the league, we didn't think anything would be able to match that. And then uh, once again, the Premier League delivered a quite uh, extraordinary second season uh, after what Leicester City achieved. But not just on the pitch, off the pitch as well, the Premier League launched uh, a very exciting new initiative. And I'm delighted to welcome Nick Perchard, uh, head of community at the Premier League, to take us through what Premier League Primary Stars is all about. Ladies and gentlemen, round of applause for, these, for Nick Perchard. Thanks, Jez. Afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for taking the time out to, to come and see us this afternoon. You all know about the power of the Premier League. You know about the power of football because you work in the industry. What you probably don't know as much about is the power of using the inspiration of football to develop community programmes and, and impact on the ground. So what I want to talk to you this afternoon about is our Premier League Primary Stars programme. It's our newest programme. We started in September 2016. It's also the biggest community programme we've ever done. Uh, we've got 91 clubs delivering it this year and it's an extraordinary uh, programme that we're working on trying to get to all primary school children aged 5 to 11 throughout England and Wales. So we've set ourselves some quite ambitious targets. Um, this all falls under our wider community strategy and one of the objectives of our strategy is to inspire ambition in communities and schools. So very much using the power of ourselves but also our our wealth of experience within our clubs to try and engage young people in positive activity in primary schools. Uh, we set ourselves some pretty big uh, objectives when we started forming this programme back in 2015. Uh, we worked with government actually to try and make sure that this programme was capturing every single primary school child across England and Wales. So uh, our objective was 10,000 primary schools to be engaged in the programme by 2019. Uh, and I'll steal my thunder early by saying we've actually increased that to 15,000 now because the programme has started so well. Uh, and we also want to have an offer available to all schools in England and Wales by 2022. So this is 20 odd thousand primary schools within England and Wales, so big, big ambitions for us. Uh, and we had to set ourselves some uh, quite challenging things over the first year of the programme to try and uh, achieve these objectives. As I say, 15,000 schools now. Our shareholders thought we'd done such a good job in the first uh, year and the clubs have done a wonderful job over the first year uh, that they wanted to challenge us with a few stretch targets and everyone lo in football loves a stretch target. So that's now what we're, uh, we're trying to do. Uh, and this is what the programme is about. Fundamentally, this is about developing PE in school sport. Um, by working with teachers and upskilling teachers. So we're not sending coaches in to take over lessons, far from it. We are sending coaches in to try and support teachers to improve their skills, to improve their knowledge and confidence so that every child, no matter what, whether they're brilliant at football, brilliant at sport or just starting out, gets that really positive first experience and hopefully goes on to have a lifelong love of sport. So that's the number one objective of, of what we're trying to do. Clearly we're trying to develop PE in school sport for too long. This is an area that's been completely neglected within the primary school setting. Uh, so we're trying to support those schools to really provide that positive first experience of, uh, of PE in school sport. But we're also using uh, our ability to engage to look at wider subject areas. So I think you'd all probably expect us to be doing PE, you'd probably expect us to be doing tournaments and those sorts of things. You might not expect us to be looking at things like resilience and maths and literature. Well actually, our coaches, our, our club staff that go into schools have the ability to use football to engage people in a way that teachers can't. Every young person is talking about fantasy football, they're talking about tops match attacks cards, they're talking about EA sports games. All of these things involve statistics and actually if we start pulling them into the classroom we engage an audience that otherwise potentially is completely lost to that subject area. So it's a massive opportunity for us to add real value to the children's curriculum, working with the, the teachers along the way. And the other thing we want to do clearly is if we find someone that wants to progress in sport, whether it's into a grassroots club, whether it's into an academy or a, a centre of excellence setup, we should have the opportunity to do that, to sign posts through, not only in football, across a whole range of sports. So we work with 12 national governing bodies of sport to try and uh, incorporate these development pathways across everything that we do. So, as I say, we're trying to get into every school within England and Wales. Now, there's no way, even with 91 clubs delivering the programme, that we can do that with the regular activity that they're delivering on our own. So we've also developed a, a significant digital offer, PremierLeaguePrimaryStars.com, and you can uh, have a look on the iPads later on after the session. That's how we're going to engage all the schools, through a digital offer that is free to use, free for teachers to sign up to. They can pull down resources in uh, those four subject areas, so PSHE, 
maths, English and PE in school sport and that really helps them to deliver their curriculum. It's all curriculum linked. We've also got some wonderful partners. So we are not specialists in PE, we're not specialists in maths, we're not specialists in English, but we know people that are. So we've worked with the National Literacy Trust in English. We've worked with National Numeracy in maths. They bring the credibility. They bring the curriculum links. We bring the stardust. We have coaches, and you'll hear later on from um, people like Tom and, uh, and Ali later on, about the coaches they're sending into schools. These are the role models that really engage young people. They wear the club tracksuit. They are a part of that club. They bring the inspiration of the Premier League to that young person's school. And what a wonderful opportunity they've, they've got. So as well as those two areas, so the regular activity that clubs are delivering, the, the big website that we've developed, we have a, a range of events and schools tournaments and things like that that we also bring. To bring this to life a little bit, here's one of the films that we, uh, we produced last season. It's a way that this guy not giving up. Like you never give up. Well, you never give up, you never stop trying until the end. Today we're working with a year four group here. We're doing a classroom based session on PSHE. The topic of the day was resilience, and we were working with the children to make sure they understand what resilience was and how they can get negative thoughts off their head. Does anyone have any ideas what they think resilience might be? If you don't have resilience, you're not going to learn anything hard. And, it's anything, okay. and hard stuff is important, so you're not going to learn anything important. True. We didn't win, but everyone tried their best. Helpful, good, keep going. You keep working. I'm going to help you too now. Sometimes you feel a bit negative. You need to be positive. When you feel positive, you just bounce all the way back up and think you can do this, come on. Any Premier League football club going into their, their local community, I think instantly you get that engagement. My name's Alex Greenwood. I'm Liverpool ladies left back and I play for the club. When I grow up, I always tell my dad I want to be a footballer. Have you ever had an example in your career where you've had to show a lot of resilience? I've been out for seven months with broken ligament. Um, I've had two operations. She's hurt herself and then she's come back up, bounced back up where she was. It's been a tough couple of months, but I'm nearly back and I'll be back for the Euros, ready to go and win gold. It's how you manage to get over these challenges and these things that might happen in your life and it's how you get over them. I would hope that we made a difference today with regards to personal development. A lot of the children know a lot about the Premier League, get a lot of enjoyment from it and their resilience is, is starting to improve. I had a free from it. Mine was when the life of bear came in. Does anyone know what Mighty is? Is it a dragon? He's not a dragon, he's a... Alive a bit. You know, it's not just the football side of things. You know, children are starting to recognise that the Premier League are here to support both their physical education and their literacy and numeracy education. So it's a definite yes, you would like Liverpool to come back and do a little bit more? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah definitely. That's just one of many, many films that we've created as part of a campaign which we'll talk about later on. Um, the, you, met, you saw the trophy in that. We've done a trophy tour around a number of schools and it's absolutely incredible the power this thing has. You take it into a school and the parents are there, the kids are there, the teachers are there, all wanting their photo taken with it. And we forget about these sort of assets that we have within football. You saw the player there um, coming into a session and talking about an injury. We have a huge resource here that we can use for, for the power of good. Uh, and we've started to do that certainly within Primary Stars over the last, uh, last nine months. So I talked about the website. The website is a bit of a step into the unknown for us. This is the first time we've ever done something that isn't just club delivery. So we are all about club badge, club delivered. All of our, pro our programs, the six national programs that we have, fundamentally are about clubs going out into their communities and delivering, whether it's in a school setting or a community setting or an education setting, whatever it may be. This is the first time we've taken a step out and done something from a Premier League perspective in the form of the website. And we did it, as I said earlier, because we had to. There was no way we could hit every school within England and Wales unless we had a digital offer. And we've invested significantly. We've developed a huge number of resources that, as I say, teachers can go on and, and download for free and clubs can utilise as well. And the next stage for us is developing resources using the club's expertise. So the sorts of games, the sorts of uh, activities that clubs are delivering brilliantly in schools today, how do we get them out to a much wider audience? Uh, there's obviously also opportunities for us to take this uh, internationally as well, which is something we've been discussing with, with partners. 
So as well as the sort of day-to-day -day delivery, the resources that we've got online, we've also done a range of incentives, pr predominantly really to get people engaged for the first time. So every teacher that signed up to the website has got access to a, uh, a resource pack, which is basically using the power of the Premier League, the values of the Premier League, to instill that uh, sort of ambition and inspiration within children. So you can see there the picture with the young lad who's done something positive within an assembly, and he's been rewarded with a Premier League sticker. Very simple idea, but children love stickers, it turns out. Uh, so we've been asked for more and more of these from schools. We've also developed a really significant uh, kit and equipment scheme to run with this. So every school that signed up to the site has access to apply for either a kit, so a full team strip for their school team, uh, or else an equipment pack, which not only helps them with their PE, but also helps with things like act active literacy and active numeracy. Uh, and as stats show there, 19,000 kits applied for, 19,000 uh, active learning packs as well. So a huge amount of resource going into schools. The other thing we've done, which again is probably the surprise element, for each of the subject areas we've done a workshop prior to developing the resources uh, and we've got experts from the industry in, so as I say National Literacy Trust, we've had children's authors in the room uh, and when we did the literacy, literacy um, workshop session, the one thing everything was telling us, put books into children's hands. Libraries are closing, public libraries are closing, school libraries are closing, children are spending hour after hour on tablets. Put actual physical books into to people's hands. So we went away and we thought it was a pie in the, eye, uh, pie in the sky idea, to be honest. Uh, but when we started researching it, we found that actually it's a relatively simple thing to do. So we've developed these book boxes, um, and they've gone out. 60,000 books have been distributed into primary schools uh, so far, and there's, there's more on the way. So again, schools signing up to the program have the opportunity to gain these things, which then add, back, add value back into the resources that we've developed. The other thing we do annually is the schools tournament. Um, so every Premier League club de delivers their own local event, uh, which then culminates in the 20 winners of those local events coming together, and we're looking at how we could expand that uh, in this coming season. So loads and loads. This is a, a whistle-stop tour of what Primary Stars is, and I'm sure we'll cover more in the, the Q&A. But a bit on progress to date. Um, so 172,000 participants so far across club-delivered activity, so the 91 clubs delivering the programme going into primary schools, they're engaging over 170,000 young people in, in, uh, in positive activity so far. I said at the start, teacher CPD, teacher development is absolutely what we're trying to do here. So just under 2,000 teachers have so far taken part in that CPD and we're looking to develop that further over the coming year. Really, really important area for us, 4,500 female only sessions. So the big thing for us is about making sure that this is inclusive. This is a fair uh, program which really does ensure that everyone can take part. So uh, an awful lot of the clubs are now delivering female only sessions to try and engage girls in the game for the first time. The big success, I suppose, in terms of numbers is uh, that figure there, 11,115 uh, 11, schools so far signed up to the program. So that's either club delivery or, or part of um, plprimarystars.com. So we've already hit that, that 10,000 target, which shows you why the shareholders have asked us to, to push it on to 15,000. Still a lot of work to be done, um, but we've, we've made a really positive start. And the, the really positive thing is the stat at the bottom there. So 93% of teachers that have taken part in the program, so they've used the resources, are recommending them onto friends. So that shows us that we're developing the right sort of content, which can only hopefully lead to, uh, to further progress. What next? So this is a six year program. Uh, it's the only program we've ever had that goes over that length of period because we want to be seen to be in there for the long term. So the next thing really is to focus on that long-term engagement. So we've got those 11,000 schools in, absolutely brilliant. How do we keep them coming back? How do we provide them with a quality service that makes sure that is really having an impact at their school? That's the fun fundamental focus of the next 12 months. So we're developing new healthy lifestyle activity. Um, we're working with health education service on that. We're developing new digital content, new resources that teachers can download across different subject areas. And we're also looking at how we can work with partners. So uh, we did a, a session actually in Manchester uh, a couple of months ago with EA Sports where uh, Marcus Rashford came along with uh, a couple of children from a, a local school. Uh, and they did a mocap session. So they did exactly what they do to develop the, the um, FIFA game with two children doing fundamental skills, which we can roll out now into sc schools to show teachers what a basic skill should look like. Wonderful way of us working with our partners who are absolutely wonderful. And, and we've got a number of other partners that we're now looking at uh, developing. And it just shows those 
really big corporate organisations are looking at primary stars as something they want to be involved in. So clearly we're, uh, we're moving in the right direction. And then the other thing is, is new competitions. So national competitions, not only in sport, clearly we'll do football, but other areas as well. So a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff still to come uh, over the next 12 months and then through to, to, through to 2022. All very nice, but actually the most important thing is the impact on the child. So I'm going to finish with one, one more film. Uh, every club had a, one of these films made about one of their um, participants over the course of the last 12, 12 months. And I think this one really demonstrates what the programme is all about. I like football the best. And I like where they score and like all that stuff. When Mr Kilby started to school, he um, started to help us playing football and to learn our skills. What is our topic today? Who can remember? Lizzie? How to shoot. I really like it, but stuff what Mr Kilby does with us. My behaviour was bad. I just didn't like going into class and doing my work. He had a lot of behaviour problems, said there was no point to school, said that learning things wasn't going to help him at all. When I don't have a football to play with, I just get angry. When he found out that Southampton Football Club was coming in, he was very excited. We work alongside the teachers as well as the pupils, and hopefully what we'll do is we'll be able to improve attainment within the pupils, but as well as engage them in their PE and in the classroom elements as well. Mr Kilby coming into a classroom wearing that badge on his tracksuit has a massive impact on all the children involved. He sits with me and just helps me do my work or my one-to-one -one helps me. So at the moment we're looking at different shapes and he learns through football so what we managed to do is we've taken something that Dylan likes and he's now showing me how it is on, on the whiteboard um, and he's doing very well. Mr Kilby approached me and asked if we could put maths um, into the PE lessons as well. And what that's done is he's engaged the pupils, um, and in particular Dylan. So what he's done is he's naturally a good goal scorer, so he would score lots of goals. So how I've done it is if he scores, he's got to come to me, answer one of the questions to claim that goal. So I get goal, celebrate quick with my friends, and then come over to Mr Kilby. Straight away Dylan would say, that's the answer. He'd get the goal and he'd be the happiest child out there. It was really, really good to see. He's really trying now in all of his lessons. He has got an incentive and he knows that uh, people believe in him. We do teamwork, resilience and challenge, because we challenge ourselves. One of the nicest things I've seen was in one of the PE lessons where he knows he's, he's doing well in his football and he used that as a, as a way of working with other boys and girls to help them get better. Um, I help with my friend Joss so, so much and I just really like him. He's been helping me do stroke and offence. His first goal was a penalty, but he, he got our team won for the match, didn't you? Yeah. He won our team the match. Over the course of, of the term that I've been here, what I've seen is him really work hard at it to progress and get better. I got better at my times tables, maths. At class now, I really concentrate, start doing my work, listening to the teacher, and then just getting all in my brain stuffed up in my brain, and I really like it. Premier League Primary Stars in action. Thank you very much for listening. Now, am I on? There we are. Thank you very much indeed, Nick. And now um, I'm going to hand straight over to Will Brass, who is the Premier League's Head of Sales and Marketing. Will Brass, ladies and gentlemen. I was very... Uh, is this working? Yeah. I was nervous knowing that this is an open plan session because I was worried everyone was going to leave. And then we had a big crowd at the start. Nick's held the crowd, so please, for heaven's sake, don't go now or you'll kill me. There we go. That's me. We, uh, many of you will know, uh, back in 2014, uh, the, the clubs in the Premier League decided to go with a clean branded model. Previously, the Barclays Premier League, uh, now the Premier League itself. And an amazingly exciting opportunity in all respects, really, to change the tone, change the style, change the visuals of how we communicate with the wider world. It gave us a chance to uh, tell people, maybe for the first time and with our own voice, what really mattered to us, uh, what we care about, what we want to achieve. And what Nick's been 
going through there uh, with primary stars is clearly a, a great example of that. Ultimately, we are trying to tell the hidden stories, the surprising truths, the wonderful truths of the Premier League and all that it and its clubs uh, do. And in going through that process, we crystallized values that really had always been there. And, and you see it on the screen here. Uh, it's a, a relatively simple um, summary of, of how we think, but a helpful one in terms of our positioning. We know, uh, we try to make sure that our first team competition is the most competitive and compelling football in the world. And by having that competition, we create a platform by which we can do so much more to, and you see it on the screen, inspire, invigorate fans, communities uh, all over the globe. We uh, have newly crystallized our brand values as part of that process, all built around the pillars of having exciting football, an inclusive experience, global appeal, and ultimately acting as a force for good. And it's no coincidence on the right-hand side of this screen, you see some of the, the human faces up close. Again, that is the world that we are occupying. That is the world that we are trying to uh, engage with and ultimately uh, inspire. And the new brand meant that we could inject new life into things that we had always been doing. And I'll go through uh, a few of those now before focusing back on, on primary stars. Premier League Kicks, our flagship, one of our flagship community programs, has been running for over 10 years, working with hard to reach communities all over the UK, uh, initially piloted with five clubs, now working uh, with 68. 65,000 um, young people uh, will have been p participants in Premier League Kicks during last season. But with uh, a bit of a lick of paint and a bit of amplification, we were able to do even more to communicate what Kicks was all about and the good that it does. And, and that for us took the form of a campaign, Premier League Kicks Heroes. We worked with every one of the last season's 20 Premier League clubs. We'll work with the remaining 48 uh, over coming months and years to highlight the work of a community hero, someone who had gone above and beyond uh, in delivering this program, in engaging with those hard to reach people under the Premier League and the Premier League Kicks banner. Uh, and, and it was a huge success. This is a, a mock-up of one of the cartoons that we shared. We brought all the heroes to life uh, and we told their story in a completely new uh, and compelling way. We're also able to, as I flagged at the top, tell the world about what matters to us. And another illustration of that is our work with Stonewall uh, and specifically their Rainbow Laces campaign. Many of you will know Stonewall, the, the very prominent, very effective LGBT uh, charity. But we got behind it as an organization uh, last year, last November, I think it was. Uh, our referees wore rainbow laces. We changed a lot of the creative assets that we had, and you, you see a, a mock-up of our, our app logo, um, because we wanted to get fully behind it. And, and what helped, and it's another great illustration, is that our clubs went then above and beyond, uh, such as their embracing of, of values that they clearly hold very deeply themselves. So ultimately, given the option, all 20 club captains chose to wear rainbow armbands uh, during that meet match uh, weekend. Premier League Live, uh, another illustration. This was in Mumbai, but it equally, and Jez can talk to this uh, better than I can, but equally expressed itself in Hong Kong over the summer. Newly clean branded, uh, properly identified Premier League uh, activities. Mumbai in the spring, as I said, but then Hong Kong, I think the, uh, the quickest selling pre-season tournament we've ever had, all the tickets, 80,000 tickets across two match days, selling out in under 48 hours. So another wonderful example of, of what we've been able to do over the last uh, year or so. And that brings us neatly back, if you like, or, or forward to um, the area that Nick uh, was talking through a few moments ago. Again, to, to emphasize the point, Premier League Primary Stars, our biggest ever uh, community activity, countrywide, it was happening anyway, and it is a brilliant scheme anyway. Um, but we saw uh, an opportunity to really get behind it, and for the first time to go above the line uh, and, and use it as a, as a way of telling the world what we are really about. The great thing about this uh, new brand positioning, I suppose, amongst many other things, is that it allows us to communicate with people who may not necessarily have been touched by football over the years or may not identify as fans of the Premier League or one of our clubs and to tell them that you can still enjoy the Premier League whether or not you happen to be a huge fan of football. And there can't really be, uh, a, a, well, there can't really be a better example of that uh, than primary stars. 
We did a lot of work with YNR, who are creative agency, a lot of quant and core work, as you would expect. And we uh, began to burrow down into what we call fans by association. Uh, fans by association are people who wouldn't identify themselves as Premier League or even football supporters, but have a partner or a child or a relation who is, who is big into football, big into the Premier League. And, and that group was very interested in learning more and very responsive when we tested and when we questioned to what we were doing uh, in this space. And so the campaign uh, came to be born. Uh, we, I think I've already shared ultimately what we are trying to achieve, telling the world more about the Premier League and its clubs, reaching those people who may not otherwise uh, have been affected or have understood the positive impact that we can have, to drive awareness of Premier League primary stars, which again was doing perfectly well under its own steam, uh, to, to help with those school registrations um, and to drive uh, further favourability among this target audience, the fans by uh, association. We worked with MEC, we rolled out right across the, the full range of media channels, both owned uh, and bought, uh, and, and ultimately were able to help Nick and his team uh, achieve their campaign targets, or get well on the way towards achieving the campaign targets. I've just got a few vox pops for you. I talked about the qualitative work. Um, these people coming up bring it to life much better than I can, because they are ultimately the target. But this is a, a little piece we recorded. You'll see it's, it's filmed on a mobile phone. But uh, fans by association, in this case, primary school parents uh, who were hearing about our plans for the first time. To contextualize, we had started to focus on uh, the poem, Try, Try Again. Many of you will have seen this now uh, in the campaign over recent months. But Try, Try Again, which, which in many ways summarizes the kind of resilience that the kids earlier uh, were talking about and which parents felt really resonated with them and appealed to what they thought footballers and clubs can do. As a parent of two children under 12, myself, um, I'm constantly telling them to, you know, have another go, don't give up. So it's, I think there's nothing better than a premiership footballer sending that message to a child they're really likely to listen to it. So, good idea. I thought it was very good that the premiership was giving back. Um, the try and try again. I thought it was very inspirational for children and as a parent I use it a lot for my child so it kind of honed in on me made me feel that actually you're working with me. It seems very well thought through some of the messages about how children learn and all of that you know in terms of the work I do I know that they, they've got it right um, so yeah it's it's nice actually it's something I'm really looking forward to seeing. Um, and I just think it's great to see such a huge organisation that can actually afford it um, putting out their hands and saying we're here, we can help you and offering their services and the children would just benefit so much from having funding. It's a good way to kind of show unity with parents, schools, teachers as a partnership to kind of say that hey, we're not just this big rich organisation, we actually are here to help all children. And it's good that they're trying to change my opinion of, of, of what it was. When I came in, you know, my first opinion of the Premier League, the first, first thing that came to my head was money. Over time, seeing what they're trying to do here, it's going to think other things will come to me, more positive things, because I see that it's not just the glamour. So here's how the campaign looked. Again, a lot of you will have seen this. Um, we uh, occupied a broad range of media channels. We didn't spend a huge sum, but we spent a very significant amount. And as I said, it was the first time we'd ever done it. So we did as much as we could to get behind it. And really importantly, and again, I stress it again, it echoes what Nick was saying earlier, the clubs firstly wanted us to do it, um, and secondly, really got behind it. To be clear, of course, and you'll hear from some clubs today, the clubs have been doing brilliant work for lots and lots of years. And the chance to amplify some of that stuff under a central umbrella was, was good for us and ultimately good for them. And one of the ways that they were hugely supportive was in supporting and, and freeing up some of their key talent to create the advertising campaign. So many of you will have seen it. We'll play it again in a moment by way of reminder, that very compelling cocktail of kids and first team players talking about or, or reading a poem in turn and illustrating maybe some of the ways that 
our clubs, our talent can motivate kids, uh, get to kids and parents more directly than anyone else. This is a lesson you should hear. Try, try again. If at first you don't succeed. Try, try again. Then your courage should appear. For if you will persevere. You will conquer never fear. Try, try again. If we strive, it's no disgrace. Though we may not win the race. What should you do in this case? Try. Try again. <laughs> <laughs> All that other folks can do. <laughs> Why we're patient, should not you. <laughs> Only keep this rule in view. Try, try. Again. Yes. We're helping to inspire primary school kids in everything from maths and English to teamwork and sport. Search Premier League Primary Stars to get your school involved. So very nice, resonated with the target, resonated with ourselves, felt like a proper representation of, of what we try to do. And what this chart does is, is show you maybe the fact that the campaign delivered what we hoped it would. Ultimately, when there was a spike in media activity, there was a spike in interest uh, in the website, um, and, and that drove to, which is the pink line, the numbers of registered schools going up. Nick talked about it earlier, but here are some, some headline results, I suppose, from, from our perspective. We very nearly got to the 10,000 target that was only meant to be hit by 2019 in one go, again, supporting the work that the Primary Stars team had been doing um, over months and years before that. But the awareness was good, considering we'd um, dipped a, a toe, maybe dipped a leg into this world for the first time, and the potential impact very significant. But what did people make of it? Well, in the end, uh, the response was was really positive from our perspective and extremely gratifying. You can see it split into sort of three columns here. Ultimately, the parents, primary school parents, one of the key demographics, the key demographic that we were trying to get to, they knew it was coming from the Premier League. They attributed it to the Premier League. The majority believed what the ad was saying. They liked the idea of primary stars. They liked the communication. So it's a big tick for us, and that's given us tremendous confidence moving forward in this space specifically and then more generally. Fan attenders. Uh, a sort of secondary demographic, if you like, were equally uh, supportive of this. Um, tremendous credibility that generated for us and an awareness of people who may otherwise have just been tripping in and out of stadiums every weekend or every other weekend as to what the Premier League and their local club were doing. Um, so as you can tell from my tone, we uh, are hugely upbeat about this. We're proud of it. We're excited about what it, what it means for us in the future. But even then, there's, we're only a little bit along the way, even in this relatively narrow area. So you can see here, parents of primary school children, we didn't get to everyone. We feel we can do more there. And we didn't get to all the fan attenders either. Now, you wouldn't have expected us to, and we didn't expect to ourselves. Uh, but given the results from those people who we did reach, uh, it's a tremendous um, encouragement for the future. And, and therefore, unsurprisingly, that future means, to some extent, more of the same. You'll see us back on screens with that advert. You'll see us back in all media. And for those of you uh, who will be taking young children uh, to the movies, you'll see us around motion picture during half term in October as we bring the Primary Stars campaign back to the forefront. Uh, and we will continue to focus on our community work as we seek to amplify uh, what the Premier League and its clubs do. Again, to, to leave you with this, and maybe this is the overarching message. The wonderful thing is that, uh, thanks to the clubs, we have a first team competition that captures the eyes of the world, that creates a level of oxygen and excitement around our business, our brand, that helps us tell the world what we care about. And ultimately, that means using that first team competition uh, to tell everybody about how much uh, the clubs and ourselves can do for so many uh, here in the UK and more broadly. Thanks very much. Well, thank you very much indeed, Will. And don't get too comfy because if Nick was the first half, Will was the second half, and we're now entering into extra time and extra time Today is going to be a panel where I'm going to invite both Nick and Will back up onto the stage. 
And one of the really key important things when we share different programmes and projects that the Premier League are involved in is that we get the viewpoints from the clubs themselves. And I'm delighted to welcome Alison Tripney to the stage, who is Deputy Director at the Albion Foundation at West Bromwich Albion, and also Tom Flower, who is Head of Community at Wigan Athletic Community Trust, to the stage now. And I'm going to leave, leave the lectern and just uh, one small um, uh, housekeeping. If you are standing, we have got a dozen or so seats here. Um, don't be afraid to come and take a seat. Rest your legs. Soccer X is a tiring three days. So if you don't have to stand, I'd advise you on Monday lunchtime to come and take a seat. So please feel free to come and take a seat. Um, so... Great to have you all up here on the stage. And Nick, Will, a fascinating insight into both uh, Premier League primary stars and also, Will, the Premier League's rebrand. Um, Nick, I am actually going to start with you before I move to both Alison and Tom. And, and obviously, this is a Premier League programme. Um, however, Premier League primary stars has a further reach, doesn't it, um, away from just, just the 20 Premier League clubs. Give us a little bit of insight into the geographical reach and, and in turn the football league clubs that have kind of got involved with the programme. It's really important for us uh, across all of our community work that we work across all, all leagues, not only with um, Premier League and EFL clubs, but also right the way down to the National League. Uh, and we've got a, a whole range of really fantastic community organisations attached to a whole range of different clubs. Uh, with a programme like Primary Stars, we wanted it to be geographically um, stretching. We wanted to hit as many different schools as we possibly can across uh, England and Wales. And it, it was absolutely um, meant to be delivered by the likes of a Wigan Athletic or a, you know, a Tramia Rovers, whoever it may be. Um, because they've got the, the qualities there. They, in most cases, they've been delivering this sort of work for 25, 30 years. Premier League Primary Stars is bringing all of that school's work together under one banner for the first time and then looking to develop other areas of, of work as well. So um, for us, you know, we're really proud of the, the huge delivery network that we've got and the wonderful clubs that we've got who do a terrific job. It doesn't matter whether they're Premier League clubs or, or EFL clubs. So, Tom, that, uh, welcome to the stage, first of all, Tom. And obviously, uh, oh, yeah, you need the, the, that's what Cliff, I think, was ready to do to hand them up there. Obviously... I won't say sadly, not a Premier League club, but uh, once a Premier League club and hopefully, hopefully in the future a Premier League club again. But I guess how, how important is it to be part of a Premier League programme like this and what impact can it have on, on your community? Um, yeah, we're delighted that we're going to have to be involved in Primary Stars. Um, it sees us work with 72 out of 105 primary schools in the borough. Uh, last year we mentored over 84 teachers and engaged with over 4,000 pupils. And what we really try and do is combine that national investment with local partnerships and our local reputation, both as a football club and a community trust to help the schools and the pupils. And so there's some big numbers there. Um, are they the numbers you had before? Has this impact kind of been strengthened by the involvement of the Premier League and kind of primary stars programme? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's trebled the amount of schools that we work with. So straight away, it gets the club's interest. The club are behind it in terms of allowing us access to players to come out to events. Because um, it can only be a good thing for the football club to have such a reach uh, across the borough. And has, this been, has there been positive feedback from the schools, from the teachers? Uh, absolutely, yeah, I'd say 100% positive. Um, very fortunate we have some excellent staff who work on the project um, and whilst the branding of the Premier League and the branding of Wigan Athletic is really important, without those staff the, the project would fail and then ultimately damage both brands. So uh, all the feedback has been really positive uh, and all the teachers have testified to it helping to improve uh, PE in their schools. That's fantastic. And Alison, have you experienced similar, similar impact, similar success at West Brom? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one of the things that, that Nick said was about Primary Stars pulls together many different types of delivery and interventions that clubs have been traditionally delivering for a long time. So it's very much about the P curriculum at the core, but then it's also about the impact uh, that Primary Stars can have on reading and PSHE and that type of thing. So again, uh, similar to Wigan, we've seen an increase in school take-up because it's a much bigger, um, higher-impacting programme now, and that's exactly what schools need. And do you think, as in kind of Nick, uh, the general feeling from all the heads of community, and I know that you have regular meetings with them, that it is um, overarching, improving that level of delivery within the schools? Yeah, absolutely, it is. I mean, we do a lot of work. We bring the coordinators together. We bring the staff together regularly. Um, we've got a really strong partnership with the FA's PE unit who come in and do some um, staff training with all the coaches that work on the programme. So this, it absolutely has to be about quality. You know, the numbers we've put up are big, but if it's rubbish, 
then people aren't going to come back. So for us, this is a long-term sustained engagement over a six-year period uh, and then beyond, trying to develop particularly the PE uh, confidence amongst teachers. So we can only do that if we've got really high quality staff and we're really, really fortunate that across the, the 91 clubs delivering the programme, the, the level of staff is just phenomenal. They are absolutely wonderful role models. And Alison, correct me, you have an education background, is that right? Yeah, before working in football, I was um, a secondary English teacher, actually. Definitely not PE. If I was still in schools, I'd be looking to engage primary stars to help me deliver. Um, but that my particular passion is, is around literacy and reading, and we've seen some huge gains in, in this area at West Bromwich Albion. So a guided reading programme delivered in partnership with a school, but by uh, you know a young sports coach in a branded tracksuit with tickets as rewards and incentives has as a huge impact and it's it's about working alongside schools to identify what they need in terms of attainment and interventions and then supporting them to to achieve that for those in the audience that perhaps aren't that familiar with the setup say of a primary school teacher setup um alison what's it, what does that look like and why 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 is there a need for an investment why is there a need for increased training why can't the primary school teachers themselves just deliver the activities yeah, there's quite a few answers to that. I mean, it's well publicised at the moment about cuts in school budgets um, and an increase in teacher workload and, uh, you know, difficulties in recruiting quality teachers. So this, this programme is, is positioned exactly right in terms of timing because all of those issues are real issues for, you know, the teacher in, in the classroom. Um, the other quite sort of stark thing to understand is that uh, when you're training to be a teacher and you're doing a PTCE or, or an equivalent teacher training program, the amount of uh, training you have specifically in PE delivery is very, very limited. It can be as little as two hours, and I've not seen a course that includes any more than, than about a day's support. So if you think about the role of a primary teacher, you've got to deliver literacy, numeracy, huge government um, targets and in those two areas, a lot of assessment and testing. Then you've also got to deliver humanities subjects, you know, creative arts and PE. It's a lot to ask from one person. And I don't think there are many primary teachers that at their own admittance would be able to deliver all of those subjects at a real high quality. Um, so the sort of neglect in PE really in teacher training means that our staff and our, our delivery staff are really well positioned to not just deliver it, but also to support teachers and upskill them in the delivery of PE as well. And I guess that's a really fascinating point that it is not just the delivery but the support of the teachers as well. And Tom, as the feedback from the teachers around that support network, is that something that you found has been an important part of the programme? I think it's a, it's a key thing to the programme and something quite new and unique, the idea of trying to sustain the project beyond the lifestyle, the length of the funding and it's been a challenge from us, from some of our coaches because it's new to them. Uh, but we find all the teachers are open to ideas. Uh, great case study of an RE teacher in a local primary school, never, never done PE before, mm. 10 weeks, two terms working with our coaches, loves it, and now capable of delivering it on their own. Um, we've continued to support, and I think that's hugely important. Uh, and also adds to the credibility of the programme when we're talking to the local authority about what we're trying to do. They don't just see us about trying to be in the schools as Wigan Athletic. They understand the sustainability angle of it, which helps our reputation as a community organisation within Wigan. And I guess, Nick, and, and Will, I suppose, that, that idea of a sustainable project rather than perhaps just uh, a club wanting to go into school for, it could be fan engagement or, or revenue income, actually going in there with a long-term strategy. It's got to be one of the, the key reasons why you wanted to start this programme. Absolutely right. I mean, as, as I said earlier, it's the first programme we've ever done for six years. Almost all of our programmes are, are sort of three years funded. Uh, and the reason is because we wanted that long-term sustained impact within those schools. So uh, it gives the clubs the opportunity to build those relationships, uh, both at a strategic level but also at a teacher level, so that coaches can go in, they can build those relationships with the teachers, they can develop those skills and confidences uh, over a longer period of time, and then hopefully gradually drift away into potentially other schools and go and support other schools that, that need that help. So uh, the, the long-term sustainability of this has to be having a, uh, a teacher work force within primary schools that are more confident and more skilled to be able to deliver high quality PE and sport so that every young person gets that really positive experience of sport at that young age group. And I guess I guess the cynic would ask why why does the Premier League feel it has a responsibility to do this uh, and because it is a big commitment as in the numbers that you showed up on the screen earlier um, and there's obviously a successful impact but perhaps why, why does the Premier League feel it has that responsibility to invest in a programme like this? I think 
in some ways it's because we can and because our clubs can. And when representatives from the clubs in particular are on the ground locally, they have, and I think Alison's already talked to it, and we, Nick and I touched on it briefly when we were talking earlier, they have an extraordinary, disproportionate impact on some of the most hard-to-reach children, uh, but children more generally. And, and that opportunity uh, is, is a really compelling one when, I suppose, as a, as a, as a central body, as a, as, a, as a collection of clubs, um, the Premier League is thinking about where it should be making its presence felt. Mm, great. And, and Will, just staying with you, as in the videos you showed were, were fascinating, uh, but also quite different to ones I've seen before in regards showcasing a, a programme, I guess, showcasing a tournament. There's, there's lots of organisations here that I'm sure have seen different promo videos, so to speak. Um, they were quite personable. Was that a conscious decision? Yeah, it, it, look, it was. Um, and it, it goes back to what I was saying earlier. One of the key thinking part of the key thinking around the rebrand is telling human stories and we hope you'll see that frankly across across everything that we do whether that's first team first team competition or anything else but certainly when we start to move away from the pitch it is fundamentally all about that and homing in on these real people and what they are really doing is is a key plank of everything that we're going to be telling the world about over time and, and that probably comes across I guess I'm glad if it does come across yeah in, in some of the collateral that we shared no I, I really do think it does it and I guess having that collateral to support your work it must be quite useful and powerful yeah I mean case study is always great always far more interesting to hear from a young person or teacher than sort of me and Alison talking so yeah it helps to uh, to tell that story a lot better uh, attracts more schools to want to be involved yeah and I guess that's the thing I think that um, the experience I've had is that it's starting to be a bit of a snowball effect now that, that, that people are hearing about it. And it's probably quite a good opportunity to, as a small side note, that um, we've got two iPads here, here today. Um, and you can actually sign up for the Primary Stars program here today. If you are a teacher, if you're a parent linked to a school, um, we've got two iPads and, uh, and any of the Premier League team or our colleagues from West Brom and, and, uh, and, and Wigan and our, and our colleagues from Manchester City and Man United will be more than happy to share with you how to do it. I believe that it's already been quite popular, so people have, not the numbers, but today as well, around that. Um, so I guess we'd kind of... What I just want to know now from both Alison and Tom is, have you experienced any more far-reaching effects? Obviously, it's great that you're in the schools with the young people. Has it had a, had a wider effect on both, kind of say, parents and also your, the wider community? Um, I think I touched on it a little bit in terms of the local engagement with our local authority in terms of stakeholder engagement. The fact that we're going to talking to them about a project that isn't isn't it about money, it's about upskilling up people, it's really appealing to them uh, and has led, led to us working more closely in, on them in a different range of different projects. So I think that's been a real key learning for us. And, and have you found that you've involved, say, parents as well in, in the programme? Yeah, absolutely. And, and feedback from parents and carers has been very, very positive. I think one of the key things to stress, and again, I've already alluded to it, is, yeah, at its core, it's about the delivery of the PE curriculum and upskilling teachers. But the spin-offs in terms of uh, raising attainment in reading, uh, we deliver um, a British Values programme through the PSHE curriculum, which is something that schools have asked us to do and want us to do, um, and also um, an ambassador programme. Um, you know, everyone's got a Dylan, haven't they? We've got a Shannon. And she went through uh, Albion Ambassadors programme, and she's been, her, her story's been profiled. And it's... it's turned her from a young girl who was very strong-willed, we get on very well, um, uh, who was a little bit disengaged in learning, wasn't really behaving her best, come through our programme, give her a bit of responsibility, a bit of credibility. Uh, she's been invited to some games, she's met some of our players, um, and it really has turned around. Put that type of video case study, for want of a better term, in front of Ofsted, and they'll understand the, the difference that we can make. Yes, that's quite interesting, isn't it? As in, we've mentioned several partners uh, as we've gone along, both at the highest level, government down to a local level. Nick, is that whole idea of partnerships from top to bottom really key to the success of this programme? Absolutely right. I mean, we can't do everything by ourselves. Yeah, even with the, the 91 clubs delivering, we are still a small cog in what is a massive wheel of education. So, yeah, we work with government, we work very closely with government, but we work with industry experts in each of the subject areas, and we work with other partners as well. So anything that we can do to try and amplify the programme, to try and add value to, to schools is something we should be doing. We shouldn't be working in isolation. This is an, an industry that needs to work together. So hopefully we're, uh, we're playing a part in that. 
And, 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 and obviously the numbers look good, but is it too early to perhaps link that impact we're having at a local level to an, uh, the overall programme at this stage? No, I mean, the, the numbers were really strong from the campaign. Um, that, that certainly drove interest in the programme. But as I said, getting a teacher or a parent to go on the website once is one thing. But then it's about what these clubs are delivering day after day after day in those schools. It's about the resources that they can download from the websites being really high quality. And it's only by doing that that actually this programme will be a success. And Will, just kind of finishing with you, as in it's a, it seems an all-round success story at this stage, as in... Are you pleased as, as the Premier League with the success of the programme and with a, with a hope and a look to the future? Yeah, I, I mean, of course we would say yes to that. But just to break it down a little bit, you know, the, the, the programme, the investment, uh, the management and ultimately the delivery is happening anyway and is brilliant. And, you know, hopefully everyone, everyone here today, if you, if you didn't know about primary sales before, you will find it hugely um, um, encouraging and, and in some ways heartwarming as well. So the programme is happening anyway. I suppose um, with that in mind, why wouldn't we want to get behind it? And, and certainly what, what the, the campaign has given us encouragement to do is to feel as if we have the voice now to get behind it and to do that in an authentic fashion that rather than undermining the brilliant work can, can in fact be additive or even amplify it. So, so in that sense, we look forward with great excitement to what might come next. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a very exciting programme and, uh, and, and I think what we're going to do now, well, not I think this is what we are going to do now, we're going to have a quick substitution as we enter the final stage of our Premier League takeover um, and I'm going to invite two of our delivery team, so to speak, who are on the ground involved with Primary Stars every day uh, and we're delighted that both Manchester City and Manchester United are here with us today to share some of their real local experiences. But before I welcome up... Uh, Jen and Lucy, I would firstly like to us all to give a big round of applause to Nick, to Will, to Alison and to Tom. Thank you very much indeed, guys. And up they come here. So joining me on the stage, the tracksuits are a slight giveaway of who works for who. Uh, but we've got Jen, Jen Mildenhall from Manchester United and we've got Lucy Millward from City in the Community. Welcome to both of you. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, now I know that obviously everything you've been watching up on the screen you are very familiar with because you're actually part of the delivery teams out there in Manchester uh, working both with teachers and with the young people. I guess what I'd like, and, and when we were chatting beforehand, all of these questions could, could go to both of you. So we'll kind of open up um, with you, Jen, around the initial feedback from the parents, from the teachers, from the young people. What have you found so far with the local schools here in Manchester? Um, I think it's just been really inspirational. Like I said, I think both clubs have had a really good relationships with schools in Manchester anyway. But Primary Stars has allowed us to enhance what we're doing. So we used to do a lot of PE in school sport, but now doing literacy, numeracy, PSHE, I think a lot of schools expect us to go in and do football. But when they realise we're doing physical literacy or we're working on reading, it just adds a new spin onto things. And I think the parents come back and say that the children are more engaged in school um, and it has a bigger effect than just the time that we spend in the school as well. How have you found, Lucy, the, the reaction of the teachers? As in, um, Alison mentioned there around some of the lack of experience the teachers have around delivering sport, delivering PE. Have you found that they kind of welcomed you in to go, oh, yeah, this is really going to help us? Yeah, I think that they, they see it as an additional support. Um, I think that's been exactly what Jen said, really. It's been holistic in terms of who's been benefiting from it. So the children, obviously, are the, the core of it, but the teachers have obviously been upskilled through it, and that's a massive part of it for us, is making it sustainable so that the teachers in the schools can continue what our delivery staff are doing, um, getting more sort of confident with that, and then can, can continue it throughout their school and, and into the future. I, I can't imagine there, there are many schools in Manchester that wouldn't welcome Man City or Man United in with open arms. But have you found that as, as a structured programme now, Primary Stars, it's helped you provide that support and, and the programme to the schools? Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, I think when we're going and engaging with the schools, they already know about Primary Stars from some of the stuff that you've seen today in terms of the advert um, and those that are into football have seen the advertising when the players are being interviewed mm. and they just really resonate with that.
that. So we've gone on ground tours and the staff are like, oh, we know about Primary Stars already. And I just think the fact that it's a national programme, it really excites everybody. Um, and knowing that all the clubs, we get together regularly to discuss what we're doing and share good practice. So there's a sort of united approach, excuse the pun, um, that we're all working together for the best for the children, really. And obviously, um, I guess it's a slight age-old problem around ped, uh, primary school teachers needing more support. What is the difference in regards, I saw you earlier on the iPads with, with different people, what is the difference in regards kind of the actual materials, the resources, the logins of primary staff, perhaps to some programmes that have been tried to be rolled out before? Yeah, I think that it's it's that every, every teacher can sign up to it, so it's not just a school thing and one person signs up and then they, they can't access it. They can do it as individuals. Um, it's very, very easy. We've, we've supported our teachers in doing it. It doesn't take very long, and then they've got access to a lot of resources that, that support them in their delivery. I think that the, the teachers especially have... have like the fact that it's not just that P element, but it's your numeracy, your literacy, so they can relate to it and, and engage in it that way as well and then transfer that across to the practical side. Oh, that's great, and I guess... Go on, Sorry, go on. I yeah. was just going to say, I think it's important as well that we're not going into schools taking over anything, so it's not where we've got teachers that are marking books and we're doing their P instead. Mm -hmm. It's really important that we're working alongside the teacher and there's a more joined-up approach because I think that's really important. Can you expand on that on a, on a bit more then? So traditionally what might happen if you went into a school the teacher wouldn't watch you then normally and yeah, pot won't. potentially previously we would go into a school and deliver sport and the teacher would maybe use that time to mark books or to catch up on any work that they were behind with whereas now I feel like there's a much more supportive role so we'll deliver all of our sessions with a teacher present um, and again it's more of a confidence thing that a lot of teachers that we've come into contact with don't feel confident around delivering PE. So it's what can we do to help and support that. So when we're not in school, you can carry on to deliver high quality PE to your students. That's really so. So those resources that you discuss, is in just in a bit more detail, are they um, downloads, videos, and what's what's the actual makeup of what you guys are or the program provides to the teachers? Yeah, so it's a mix of that. So obviously they can go on there and download different things. I think we saw before about the resilience one. Um, so it's things that can be relatable to school life, not just specifically PE and school sport. Um, obviously they've got the videos on there as well. So I think that there's a lot of different things that teachers can go on there and see what maybe would fit best for their school and for their children. Um, not just, you know, generically, but for the individuals, which, as we saw before, that, you know, with Dylan, everyone's got an individual story. So it's making sure that it fits for that child and that class and helps them. And, and uh, without pressing you for figures, if you know, as in what, what's the kind of the numbers around how many schools you're working in, how many staff, as in kind of if you know them offhand, if you don't, don't worry, but kind of what's the, start, the scale of, of what's happening in Manchester at the moment? I'll be honest, I think it's snowballing a little bit. Yeah. Um, I think when we looked at our figures, we've engaged with over 150 schools just last year, mm. um, and that's in different capacities. I think we tailor our programmes to meet the needs of the school, so it's about not going in and saying this is what we're going to do, it's about sitting down with those schools and saying, right, how can we support you and what works for you and what can we offer you to enhance what you're doing? Um, like I said, I think the main thing for us is the positive impact that we're having on the children, how we can support the teachers. Um, and we're finding that parents are engaging a lot more with school now. We found that when we were having conversations with some of the schools, it was they were struggling to get parents to engage in parents' evening. So we now have a stand-up parents' evening, so we can talk about, OK, this is what they're doing academically in their lessons, but actually in the work that they're doing with Man United, these are some of the great stuff that your children are doing, and we found that's really effective. And I guess it's quite exciting, and having both City and United on the stage today, and if those numbers are replicated over with City as well, that's a, a real impact in one city that this programme is being able to, I guess, give you that, that platform within that school to then, then, then grow and build. And are you finding that as well, that the, the getting in there through primary size is allowing you to, to kind of expand as, as, as a programme within their school? Yeah, definitely. And we've obviously had partnerships for uh, over 30 years at City in the community, but I think it is enhancing that. And exactly what Jen said, it's, it has snowballed since the Primary Stars came out. Um, and I think it's great that we've got you know two big clubs in Manchester whereby we, we're working together to make sure that the children and schools of Manchester are getting the Primary Stars programme. And on, on the young people, again, throwing this at you slightly, has in, are there any stories or any kind of uh, either teachers or young people that have had a real impact on you guys since you've been involved in the programme? 
I think it's just more, I get really um, inspired by their attitudes towards things. I think like we go into schools and we can deliver PE and sport, but it's when teachers are coming back and saying, oh, they're more supportive with their friends. They're not as competitive as they used to be. Um, they're more empathetic about making sure that a session's inclusive and that everyone can get involved. And it's the knock-on effect academically. So we've heard from teachers about children's handwriting improving, that they're more engaged during lessons. And like I said, I think it's, it's great that we can spend some time in the schools, but when you hear about the wider impact and that the children themselves are coming back and saying, oh, I was playing at the park and we got loads of kids involved that we've never spoke to before. I find that more inspirational that we're teaching them life skills and things that they will take on going forward in life, I think. Yeah, I think very similar. It's it's really good to see, you know, the stories that we saw there really in terms of the children actually developing as children. Um, I think a big thing, like Jen said before, is the, the traditional way would be that the teacher not wouldn't be in the lesson. Um, and I think that now the teacher's being in there, not only are they learning, they're also seeing their children in a slightly different environment and a slightly different light. Um, and we've seen relationships sort of been nurtured and fostered in a different way rather than just in the classroom. Um, but yeah, I think there's, there's a lot of success stories very similar to Jen, whereby... The, it's the engagement more than anything. It's not necessarily the the skills of of the, the you know the practical skills of being able to score like we saw before on the video, but actually the engagement within it and the engagement in school life and their learning and, and I suppose their future. And I guess just finally, with those number of schools, you must have quite um, substantial teams that are going and deliver them. And I think we saw the coaches from Liverpool and Southampton in the videos. How are your coaches um, enjoying finding the experience of going in with the schools, working with teachers? As in, I guess a football coach, when they start on their path, perhaps didn't have that in mind that they would be going in and working with primary school teachers. Where, uh, as in, is that something that they've enjoyed? And have they been on some additional training to, to get to that point? Yeah, absolutely. So, like you said, a lot of the time when we employ coaches, they are football coaches. Um, but I think definitely for the Primary Stars programme, they just really want to have a positive impact on these children. And I think that with the sort of funding that, that has come along from the Premier League, we can invest in it and they can spend more time in a primary school. I think previously we used to spend maybe a term in a school and then move on to another one, whereas we're now spending two, three years in a school and we're sharing that journey with them um, and supporting them when they move on to high school. And I think they really, our coach as well, have really enjoyed using the power of football and the power of Manchester United to teach them about literacy and numeracy. And it's a really innovative way of getting them interested in something that maybe they're disengaged with during school. Yeah, I think very similar. It's it's good to see that the, the coaches are enjoying the delivery because that makes the children uh, benefit from it. But very similar in the way that the teachers maybe aren't used to that practical environment. The coach is now going into the classroom environment. They're finding that they're building relationships in slightly different ways with the children. Um, I think they're really enjoying that, that element of it as well and, and you know the dynamic nature of the programme so that it's not just practical, but they can engage children and you, you know use the badge, use the Premier League, use football and, and activity to engage them in wider school activities as well and hopefully of interest in entertainment. Yeah, because some of these coaches are spending quite a lot of time in these schools, aren't they? They're, they're nearly becoming a member of staff kind of in, in some of the schools. And are you finding that increased contact time between club and school is, is really enhancing that relationship? Yeah, definitely. I think, like you said, I think when we first go into a school, they see the badge and it's like, oh, you're here to work with the school football team. And I think it's like, no, that's not all we're here for. Um, so, again, it's sending that message across school. And I think, like I said, football and particularly the badges of the clubs are so powerful. I think we can send some really positive messages and that's really, really important. I think, like I said, the delivery is great, but it's the messages behind that that, that I think are really inspiring. Oh, fantastic. Well, look, it's really been great to hear firsthand how, how Premier League Prime Stars is having an impact here in Manchester. Uh, and good luck on your continued quest to, to engage more young people. It sounds like you really are having a positive experience on many young people within uh, primary schools in Manchester. So, ladies and gentlemen, give a round of applause for both Lucy and Jen. Thank you very much indeed, guys.